there are not enough bees to pollinate the crops that are in the ground at the moment if everybody got their act together. The annual bee run from the eastern states to the almond orchards in Victoria is the largest movement of livestock in Australia. And yes, I can say that, as the tax office classifies bees as livestock. Coordinating the logistics are a handful of bee brokers. We've got two or three beekeepers that are well over 4,000 hives. Some from Dubbo, some from the mountain area in New South Wales, high country. We've got a lot out of Queensland this year. I have had people describe my job as um, uh, like trying to round up cats on a horse. I, I, don't, I don't think it's that bad, but uh, we have over 200 beekeepers here this year. Yeah, the bottom, yeah. But, but they've got so much honey in the bottom, they need room to shift that. Third generation beekeeper Trevor Monson has been a bee broker for 40 years. All his work comes down to a tight four to five week pollination window. We get contracts from the almond company uh, and then we source bees to fill that contract. Then we plan on where the bees are going, we design the drops. We then have a look at the hives to guarantee that we've satisfied that they're worth being paid then we do all of the financing and send out the checks and then send them home again. Would you want Trevor's job? I wouldn't go near Trevor's job. No. It's, it's crazy what Trevor's got to do. So, you know, I'll take my hat off to what he does. It's, uh, he does an awesome job. This year, Trevor's northernmost bees came from Karoi, two hours north of Brisbane. It's Rex Carruthers' 15th year taking his bees south. They must be in peak condition, but drought has made it tough. It's been a pretty stressful year this year because of the conditions. So we've done nothing but work on bees for six months to try and get them all. And they've been pretty good order now, but it's um, been a lot of work to get them there. The bees have it pretty comfortable. <laughs> it's the beekeeper that does it tough. On moving day, after the bees have returned home, they're calmed and then loaded onto a truck. Rex and his co-driver have a 24-hour drive ahead of them to Boundary Bend in northern Victoria. Their 7 million passengers will snooze on the way. There's 480 hives and then about 15,000 in each and you'll be coming back for another load? Yes, as quick as we can. So um, we drive two up, so um, we wish we'd be back here and reloaded in four days. Okay. With another 480. And, and then? Another four days after that, another 480. The pair don't muck about, stopping for just a few hours to rest and shower. Crossing the bridge at Tooleybuck means they're close and the bees will soon be flying to work. I'm pretty relieved to see that um, there's some weeds on the ground and a few flowers on the trees this year. Like last year, when we came in with our first load, there was just um, red sand, no food at all for the bees. Orchardists have stopped slashing weeds and started planting a custom seed mix of bee-friendly plants on bare ground to make sure no bee goes hungry. The bees are amazing little insects as uh, you put them on the ground and they've been on the truck for 22 hours through the cold and the, the night and um, they instantly, as soon as it's warm enough, they're flying out looking for food and water. Um, straight away they don't seem to mind that they've come from a 26 degree day to about a, an 8 or a 10, whatever it is. In the orchard, every second row is a different variety flowering at different times. 
bees like flying down rows. It's Trevor's job to trick them to fly across as well, so pollination is even. They do an orientation flight and home in to where they are and, yeah, what's, what am I here for? And it's, yeah, they're amazing little things. When we start prepping the bees, I'd like to know what the body protein is. Yeah. Trevor is seeing more and more beekeepers concentrating on pollination services rather than honey production. After freight and, and feeding and all the rest of it, they could net $100 a hive. Okay, is that a significant um, income compared to what they could make from honey? Well, the beauty of it is that, it, that it's a spring check, guaranteed check that they get, you know, like if you had a thousand hives, it's $100,000 and, and it sets you up for the year. Uh, honey's not as reliable this time of the year as what, as what this is and the competition is, is sending the price up and so the future looks fairly good. This is one of my favourite hills. There is another one that's higher, but yeah, I, I get a bit of a buzz every time I come here. It's pretty special. Victoria produces nearly 70% of Australia's almonds. Nationally, the industry's grown 11-fold since 2000, now exporting to 52 countries. The average person is just gobsmacked when I bring them up here and just see it. From one end to the other, the orchards that I look after, it's about 95 kilometres. The almond industry is dependent on bees for pollination. No bees, no fruit set, no almonds. This season, Trevor's organised hives for five companies, his biggest year yet. We've sourced bees this year to supply 110,000 hives of bees, and that's probably roughly 40% of the industry, but probably 90% of the, the almond industry is here in this district. When flowering hits 75%, he'll send some hives home as hungry or hangry bees fight. But early on, they're as busy as, well, you know. And they do love working almond flowers because the pollen is a really high protein. It's crucial visiting bees are healthy and not a disease risk. The Department of Agriculture gives extra biosecurity protection for the many bee owners. Because of the number of hives we have on farm and the amount of bees that are here, it is a fear of beekeepers of being contaminated. So uh, we, it, it's good that they come and they do a check the value of bees to Australian agriculture is a staggering $14 billion. Traditionally though, beekeepers' income hasn't reflected this importance. But increased demand and competition from the growing macadamia nut, blueberry and avocado industries is driving up the cost of pollination services. I want to move on now to almonds, which are the, <laughs> the passion of my life. At a recent Queensland Beekeepers Conference, growing demand for bees, the ageing workforce and pollination rates were hot topics. There is one problem, but the price ain't enough. <laughs> Look, the price will rise. There is absolutely no question. It's a supply and demand thing. The number of beekeepers in Queensland is up, but hive numbers have plateaued, as many of the new entrants are hobbyists. So is crunch industry, time close the when there industry. won't be enough bees? From this you can see that there are just not enough bees. This is without varroa mite. There are not enough bees to pollinate the crops that are in the ground at the moment if everybody got their act together. On the flip side it's going to entice more people to actually um, have a look at you know, becoming over, expanding there then their hives from what they've got now to moving forward and um, you know, new, new uh, beekeepers coming into the game. So I, I, I'm pretty sort of hopeful that, you know, I don't think it's going to impact us directly. In May, stung by a six-figure pollination bill, walnut and almond company Webster surprised the industry by buying its own bees. 
It paid $5.2 million for a honey business with 5,500 hives. It was inevitable. It, it, people have been thinking about it for a couple of years now, but, um, but it sort of caught a lot of people by surprise and, and the price they paid and, um, and you know, it, but, but it's probably a smart move if they can pull it off. Being so reliant on bees makes the industry vulnerable. Trials of self-pollinating trees are in their early days and of course, as with all things ag, what about drones? Mechanical pollination with little bee drones, is that science fiction or is it possible, do you think, given what the Israelis are working on? Well, funny you say that, the Israelis are here right now as we speak, doing exactly what you're talking about. So, you know, they've they're been out harvesting pollen for the last week. Um, they'll store this pollen for this year. They'll be back next year. Due to water scarcity, the almond industry has placed a self-imposed moratorium on new plantings. It doesn't take the pressure off Trevor though, as many young trees in the ground already are still to mature. He needs to find 50,000 more hives in the next few years. And just one new nearby orchard will need 20,000 of them. There is a farm about 30 k's down the road that uh, is going to be 8,000 acres and I believe that to be the biggest almond farm, single almond farm in the world. In the world, not Australia, but in the world. Trevor Monson says he'll hand bee broking over to his boys when he turns 75. His next three years promise to be more challenging than the last 40 as where is he going to find so many extra bees?